Ladies and gentlemen, we're outside the UFC Performance Institute and we're gonna get toured actually by Forrest Griffin. So super looking forward to it. This is crazy. It's hot as heck here in Las Vegas. Let's get to it. Hey, no, thank you guys for coming out. Yeah, yeah. It should be good. Yeah. Absolutely. So guys, we're here with Forrest Griffin. He's gonna give us the Performance Institute tour. Show us All around. Right, so first thing and the most important thing, this is the coffee machine. I love coffee. I'm a huge coffee drinker myself. Yeah, But me too. I like too much sugar in mine. I'm mm -hmm. so bad with it. What I do is I take the vanilla protein drinks. Yeah. And just get a little splash of the vanilla protein. In the coffee? Pretty, yeah. I actually just like a that. little bit of uh, artificial poisons. So it's a pretty packed week. How many people do you think are in this building, like on average? Uh, We'll have a throughput, whatever that means, of over 50 UFC athletes today. Sure. Ah, cool. This is quiet. All right, all right. So here's what we're doing here. So at the UFC Performance Institute, we are open and at no cost to all 650 UFC athletes on the roster. The thing we do best is probably link all those services together, right? Instead of disparate services off here and here, we put it all sure. together and make it work for you. And one of the things I get to do is make sure all the cool stuff we do in here actually works in with your MMA training and to make you better in the octagon on fight night, right? Makes yeah. sense? Good. Makes sense to me. So, <laughs> so this yeah. is a DEXA. You know what this is? I had no idea. I was hoping you were going to tell me shit. Um, <laughs> no, this is a dual energy x-ray and the last word I can't pronounce, but it's a, it's a big one. It tells you your body fat. It tells you your bone density, but most importantly, what it does for the purposes here is it tells you how much lean body mass you have. Kind of help guide you to your optimal weight class, right? Lean sure. body mass versus fat mass. And um, the other component to that would be your metabolism, right? So your basal metabolism, how many calories you burn in a day. This is a cortex, metabolic cart or gas exchange. You sit down, yeah, I know, I listened when they, when they sold it to us. I really listened <laughs> to all this stuff and I, I repeated it now, <laughs> verbatim. Um, no, so you lay down with one of these fancy masks right there for about 20 or so minutes. Yeah. And you breathe and it tells you your basal metabolism, which is how many calories it takes you to stay alive a day. And then how's, then, that, how's that possible from breathing? So, well, I mean, your car is like a, a, an engine basically, right? Okay. So there's, uh, you take oxygen in, you take fuel in. Your engine takes oxygen in and it takes fuel in, right? Sure. Gasoline. And then there's an explosion, like minor or chemical, whatever, yeah. that creates energy. And then there's a waste product. So carbon, you so. You know, obviously there's undigested food, but then even your bad breath, like that is a waste product coming up from your digestion, right? Sure. And then CO2 comes out, oxygen goes in. The ratio of oxygen in and out, or excuse me, oxygen in, carbon dioxide out, that's gonna tell you your metabolism. Now the cooler thing they can do, because it tells you how many times that like explosion internally is happening. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you're like, a, it's like a mad scientist for like UFC fighters. Uh, it's not that mad. It's pretty <laughs> common. It's pretty common. Sure. But it wasn't common for UFC athletes. So that's one oh, of the okay. cool things this place does is it takes best in class technology that other sports have had or have. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives it to the UFC athlete. Is there a plan to make more throughout the United States, not just in Vegas? Throughout the United States. I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I think personally that would happen internationally first. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. You know, I think there's other countries that are in more need. need of it. Yeah, I think it would it would improve uh, performance in other places more okay. than it would in the states. I think you know, there's a lot of smart people at those gyms in Florida. A lot of actual PhDs that work mm -hmm. out in Florida, and they do a good job. And that's another cool thing I'll bring up. Mm -hmm. The UFCPI, we want to work with them. Like, oh, you you got seven. UFC fighters that you've been training and you, mm -hmm. you've been doing this sport for 20 years as a strength coach, tell us what you've learned. Here's what we've learned, here's what you've learned. And you know, sometimes there's gonna be slight differences, but, but that's the thing. And, and you know, we have access to, again, I'm talking about this data, these fancy tests. We have access to these tests. We can give you that information so your strength coach back home can help you make informed decisions. So we'll play mm -hmm. as big of the piece as you want or as small as you want. Just Okay. You know, any window of need you have. So I mentioned meal high prep. meals, yeah. Nice. Boom. A... Has everyone in the UFC came through the center oh, at wait, some point? Wait, this is important. That is, um, oh God, what do you call it? Where it tells you your weight or your body mass, a scale. Ooh, big boy, almost 160. At the end of the day, this is what you have to do. If you don't make the weight, <laughs> good point, good fight. point. So this is a restroom. Nice. Now what you do in here, yeah. see, is you <laughs> It's fancy, the ceilings are huge. You, you excrete waste. No. <laughs> so, are you familiar with USADA? 
You You're shot an anti doping agency, yeah. Oh, a little bit. Yeah, so all 650 plus UFC Ross athletes around the world are on the USADA program, so they have to keep a whereabouts app on their phone, which uh, makes them accessible to doping control officers for random drug testing at any given time. Oh, so they can just find you so they at do any find point? You. They do find you, yeah. It happens here all the time, and then we'll, we'll, we'll like, that's where we'll let the testing happen. Yeah, interesting. Sports medicine. Do you know what sports medicine is? <laughs> a little bit. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> it's it's pretty straightforward. Sport? What is it though? I have no idea. Okay. I, mean, it is, it's like, I don't take classes on it. I don't know. I don't know. Linda, my director of physical nice therapy. You. you know, as far as like you have a bigger injury, then we relate to the UFC medical team for um, x-rays, etc. Gotcha. For, for imaging, x-rays, MRIs, okay. CT, whatever. So you got some prime in the fridge. Is that just all over the place? Yeah, yeah. People <laughs> like it, man. The cool kids like it. So they do They do everything you can imagine here, right? Yeah. Cupping, needling, instrument assisted soft tissue, which is grass and um, PEMF, ultrasound. The other thing they do so well here, you're not totally broken, right? This is a sport where you have to fight. And that's how you make a living. You have to do it. You have to do it more often. So if you have a knee injury or something, they'll modify some practices and help you understand what you can do in the realm of MMA or SNC while you can't do full full training, right? Sure. Fills with air and then you can run with as little as 20% of your body weight. The idea being is that you don't create any kind of imbalance Unwanted or over or under use injuries, right? Yeah. And then, you know, a Pilates reformer, right? I'm sure you've done a lot of Pilates. <laughs> Me? Yeah, no, sure I don't think so. <laughs> How old are you? 21. God, you should do more Pilates. Pilates now, you'll be bulletproof later maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Give the tours there. I don't do the actual <laughs> stuff. No. Sir? Now this is the fun part. Before we get back into the UFC tour, I wanted to let you guys know about Barbell Apparel sale that's going on. They're here to keep your training on track with up to 30% off all their performance driven line clothing. Their lightweight and durable fabrics are engineered to keep you cool and perform at your highest level. Like Navy SEAL Chad Wright, who actually ran a mind blowing 250 mile race in the gear. Join Barbell's community of athletes who make no excuses and settle for nothing less than the best. This of course is backed by 365 guarantee, so if the clothes break or whatever, you get a replacement. That link is in the description below. Below. Now let's get back to the tour. So this is obviously the strength and conditioning room. Um, it's kind of small for 650 athletes, yeah, it's right? Very small. So, and you see, there's a lot of space, right? So yeah. if you think about what, what what are the things that a UFC athlete needs, well, so for us, so we can service the entire population, we do a lot of desk testing and diagnostics. They use the force plate for that. It's a bilateral force plate. So if I have any imbalances. So like uh, for me, I did an isometric mid-thigh pull and I had 16% less force going through this leg than this leg. This is the one I blew out a couple times, obviously. Sure. They do the jumping and landing, um, you know, and they can tell you any asymmetries and then they can also tell you what's important for us and for wrestling, yeah. rate of force development. How Ooh. long does it take you to get strong? Oh, wow. Right. So they can tell you how strong, you know, you don't see a lot of guys squatting 600 pounds no but you need to be able to move your body weight plus your opponent's body weight as fast as possible yeah make sense so we want to ascertain that threshold strength sure interesting what does that like the tv do there it's just the results of this oh so yeah the testing I comes see. out there and there's the results and then you see he's got a um so he's got the ipad there you see oh, yeah yeah so they use a platform called Visual Coaching Platform. Okay. And what they do is that's how they send the athlete their workouts. And then the athlete will input what they did, what they were able to do. If they couldn't, if they couldn't do the workout, it was too heavy, too light. And then they can make changes, right? So sure. again, remote coaching has come a long way. Yeah. And, and COVID helps with that. All these stuff I've never seen in my life. I wouldn't have any idea to work out how to work out. So these, these hangar doors open, obviously, and then oh. you can work out on that turf area. That's awesome. There's a little sprint track over there. Yeah. Love the Versa climbers. All right, so this is just where I come from my long time. I, I mentioned the strength and conditioning diagnostics out there. Mm -hmm. So this is where we do the energy system diagnostic. They leave it on the board for me, because I always forget. No, a lactic, glycolytic, and then long-term aerobic. So, and um, you're in the splash zone, so sometimes people will throw up in there if oh. they're doing it. Oh, in this zone? Dang no, it. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But I'm not. It actually seals air tight, and it pumps nitrogen in, yada yada, and it simulates high altitude, low oxygen. In content. this just one room? Yeah. yeah. So we can, you can go to 
you know, I think people are fighting in Utah and they're using this room a couple hours a day to fight in Utah. And the other thing, we don't give them away, but we can help you buy one and get a discount on it is those tents you sleep in. Right? Oh, we might as well, we're here. Yeah. Might as well cover this. So I mentioned supplements. Here's throwing supplements. Uh, fueling station, pre, post-workout shakes, meals. It's also where an athlete can come when they're here to get some nutritional consultation, specifically about the meals. And do you guys go through the cafe? No. Oh, well, there's a cafe. So this is the dry recovery, you know, cryotherapy you're familiar with. Yeah. And this is obviously a tanning bed, which I don't use, because you gotta look good. It's not a tanning it bed. It is not a tanning bed. I wish it was. <laughs> I wish, it is actually a really cool piece of kit. It's low level laser light therapy. And there's quite a few studies that say it works. I don't understand, but the people, the smart people told me that they say it works. Um, what it does is reduces whole body inflammation, right? And it can also uh, help with your mitochondria health as well. So, and that's, you know, that's pretty like kind of a known thing. So there's no reason not to do this if you're here. It can help with recovery. Yeah. Low, low level laser light therapy or infrared therapy. Is, is there such a thing as over recovery of everything? No, but... I'm glad to say that because I think, I don't think you can over recover. I don't know. But I do know some people that do a lot of recovery and I'm like, mm. did you do the workout that warranted all that recovery? That's not related to the UFC athletes. That's most related to my friends. <laughs> They're like, well, I mean, okay, I get it. you're recovering. You're, you're so recovered, but <laughs> did you do anything to warrant that? <laughs> Speaking of the devil, I was just talking about you. See, that's an ice bath. He's getting in there, some nice recovery. Put your hand in there. Put your hand in there. Oh, no. <laughs> not too cold. Pretty cold. You do ice baths? Sometimes. Mm. Not recently, but. Ice, hot, so that's, you know, around 100. Feels so good. It's so hot here. Yeah. I've never, I've never been in a place so hot. Really? Yeah. Where are you from? Wisconsin. Okay. So. This is a HydroWorks treadmill. So this is a treadmill. It goes up or down depending on the height of the athlete. And then you, you basically run on it. And you run. Um, you know, kind of take your body weight off and run. It's pretty cool, right? You yeah. can swim against the current, or is that just only for running? So you can actually swim against the current. You run against the current, oh, and the current, okay. like, pushes you back. Maybe you can swim against it. I don't is know. it just, like, good grip on your feet? I feel like I'd slip. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, it's pretty easy. One thing I'll say is if you've never done it before, and you do, like, a 30-minute session, yeah. it's going to tear the bottoms of your feet up. So a lot oh. of people, like, I do it in socks. So yeah, like I said, we, ha we have this, uh, this steam room because some people like it. Yeah. This is, uh, uh, these are stairs. Thank you. you walk I didn't up know what down. they were. Yeah, you walk up. It looks like I knew how to do it already. They're pretty good, pretty good. This is a handrail for old people to hang on to <laughs> so they don't fall down. I've never been in an MMA gym. You've never been in an MMA gym? No. No. We're making, we're making dreams happen here then. <laughs> so what we got here, we got um, a 30 foot octagon and then a 25 foot octagon, right? So there's two octagons that athletes compete in, right? A 30 and a 25 and, and you know, you wouldn't want to train in a mat that was a different size than the mat you were competing sure, in, Sure, yeah. Right? Do people have time frames they can come in or how do like, they check out yeah, when they Yeah, use there's it? definitely time frames and we didn't stop by the front really, but the operations team plays a huge role because we serve people that are going to fight each other. So we have to get them in at different times. And we, everybody wants to come at the same time. So it's, it's always a bit of a negotiation, right? Mm. As far as scheduling. Sure. And then people want to come in and just hang out and have a two hour practice. Fine. Yeah. Two and a half hours. No, we need other people. We got to have <laughs> other people coming in, right? Yeah. And then you can see we got some tertiary cardio weights um, and for like cross training or circuit stuff yeah. where you do like a weight, a drill, whatever. Nice. Obviously bags. I think pull up bars with uh, pull up bars with uh, grip, rock climbing grips. My grandpa used to do that. Hey brother, how you doing my friend? So uh, there's a force output measurement device. Oh that's right, test how hard you hit. Yeah, a mat area. And you see for us that padded wall is huge, right? Because yeah. you always end up against the fence. That's so sick. All right, it was nice knowing you guys. Yeah. <laughs> right. bum -ba -dum. This must be where important stuff goes on. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what I keep telling people. <laughs> and um, yeah, it really sucked because that was my day off. Mm. Bastards. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have been here to take care of those dudes. Anyway, uh, okay. this is our media center, 60-person tiered seating, four translation booths in the back. 
Um, these knuckleheads. <laughs> I, 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 um, so, hey, what is this room for? Yeah. That's right, we want to educate. So we're doing a lot of cool stuff, research. They've published two journals here already in the, in, in the weeds on how to prepare for the sport of MMA, right? What's gonna do to your body, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And the UFCPI wants to disseminate all that information globally. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention in the PT room is they actually do a lot of concussion screening, so C3 Logic. And then we also have a partnership with the Cleveland Clinic and it's called the, it's called the, it's real, it's a real creative name, the Brain Health Study. Nice. Our athletes' brain health study. It used to be fighters' brain health study, but then they put bull riders and military in it as well. Sure. So now it's athletes' brain health study. And they're legitimately trying to figure out, hey, what's the point when you, your body's like, nah, nah, don't do this anymore. Your brain says no. You know, mm -hmm. um, I actually didn't get there. Um, my knee said no. And my shoulder was like, you're, you're done fighting here. <laughs> Is you that an aura, aura ring? Uh, it is an aura ring. Do you like it? It's okay, yeah. I, I mean, was thinking about sweet. getting one. I just never made the commitment, I guess. Yeah, it's. I had a whoop for a couple years before. Um, they gave it to me for free. And then I noticed it was like 30 bucks a month. And I was oh, like, well, yeah. I don't want that much. And then I got this one for free for a couple years. Sure. And I think one of those things being heart rate variability, uh -huh. which is a good indicator of, I don't know, we'll ask somebody smart. That's my office. Nice. You're a big reader? Uh, no, but people like to give me books. People just love giving so, me books. People give me books and I just set them there with right. other books. I actually used to be a big reader. Really? You know, I've written two books. You, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah, but, but now that you can like pause and fast forward TV, I don't need to read anymore. <laughs> so. These are my two favorite quotes in the canon of the UFC quotes. So Boom. If, if size mattered, the elephant would be the king of the jungle. That's a good one for you to remember that yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, you, should, you should say that. A black belt only covers two inches of your ass. You have to cover the rest. That's awesome. So this is just like a little media center. Uh, ping pong. Ping pong world championships in here? Yeah. Who's the best ping pong player in the performance institute? Ooh, I don't know. I, it's, I don't know. I don't play. Man. Yeah, this is very cool, right? So it's UFC 1 to UFC 211, every fight poster ever. And it is, um, yeah, every fight poster in Crown Law Lodge Corps, UFC 1 to UFC 211. And why 211? Did it stop there? Because that's when this place opened. This is where, I don't know what happens in here. What the, is that a light? Where, yeah, it was a spotlight. If you're, if you're lying to me, I put you in the light. <laughs> um, no, so this is, oh, I hurt my back because I'm old. Just a comfy couch? Yeah, this is where I oh, like this to. this is where you play Xbox. Well, yeah, it's not hooked up. It's not even hooked up. Oh, it's just why is it there? Uh, you know what? Now that Kevin Lee's by, this is a funny story. Okay. Per me, it might not, it's actually not funny at all. I don't even know I said that. So when we were opening up, Kevin Lee was in town training here, so I had him set that Xbox up for me. And I didn't know you needed an account. So <laughs> for like three years, it was like Kevin Lee's account. <laughs> People <laughs> were playing Xbox on. Sure. And then somebody disconnected it and I didn't know how to reconnect it. And uh, so, <laughs> so for the last like two years, it's just been a pretty tour. But now oh, that Kevin man. Lee is back on the roster, I can see if he could help me reconnect. Right. Well, yeah, my, looks like you might need like an cup. HDMI cord or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but this is mostly where I like to drink really expensive scotch and smoke fine cigars. Oh, nice. You know, and just talk about. Well, how, it looks like a place to do it. How I like leather-bound books. I don't read them, <laughs> but I like the smell of them. But this is actually where two days a week in person they do sports psychology. So, okay. do you ever do sports psychology? Like, really watered down. I'd okay. Say. But, Tell me about it. Um, there was a couple times at practice when like a lady would come in. I remember one from uh, middle school and she came in just saying, lie on your backs. And she told me these things just to say to myself, I guess. And what were they? It was, it they, was, was it yeah, she brought the whole group down and was like, I'm a good wrestler. And like, just really believing like, you know what? Like I do train, you know, five days of the week. And I'm like, you know, maybe I should believe it. I think if you believe it and you go out and do it, so. If you can believe it, you can achieve it. It's so Bro. cliche, but Sorry. it's so true. <laughs> uh, yeah. Are you a big sports psychology guy? Uh, it's funny you say that. So we did not originally open, or the PI did not originally open with sports psychology. One, we had a lot going on. Two, I wasn't a huge believer. Why? Uh, because I love that fighting is so hard, and it's very mentally hard to get in front of everybody you've ever known 
and you're fighting another human being who is trying to hurt you, right? Yeah. What are you guys doing? We are not. We are not. We can Come on in. Come on in. We're just talking about the values of sports psychology. Oh, right. Oh. Do, you, do you do sports psychology? <laughs> yes, I do. There you go. Yeah, 100%. All right. I've been doing it for a couple of years. Yeah? Yeah, it works great. All right. You should have seen him before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what was sports psychology back in the day? It was probably like a couple of years. Well, yeah, so I was just saying, like, we didn't originally open with sports psychology, and one of the reasons was I wasn't sold on it. I thought I liked that fighting is hard. If you need to sit in a dark room with somebody and have them sit, sit, tell you that you like fighting, maybe you don't like fighting. Maybe you should go get a jobby job, you know? Maybe you should get a day job. <laughs> yeah, like, that, was the, that was the original uh, yeah. thought. Yeah, yeah, you. To, Well, then you realize what it actually is. It's about compartmentalizing things. It's and about. Also, I think back then it was, a, it was fighting and not the sport it was, competition it was mixed competition. martial arts competition yeah. now it's a, it's a sport where yeah. back then like every demon you had inside you was good yeah 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 and what happened after that doesn't really matter but right now yeah. you have to take care of yourself in and outside of the cage which yeah it was basically like when i was growing up i could either go to the bar for therapy or i could go <laughs> train so i went and trained <laughs> i went and fought other human beings that was my sports psychology no, 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 I mean, and back then, if you went to a psychologist and said, "Sir, I need psychology because I'm, I'm a professional. I fight in yeah, yeah. octagon," they would have probably said, "This is above my pay grade." Yeah, they're probably <laughs> like, "I uh, think you need a different psychologist." Try this jacket. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's got funny sleeves. Don't worry about that. There you go. Man. Sports psychology works. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, these are my gloves. <laughs> yeah, these are the loaner gloves. Who are you beating up with those? Nobody. The bag. <laughs> I, I probably didn't even win that one. So that that's that's pretty much um, that's pretty much what we do here. What's your favorite section? My Person. favorite section, like section, section. Uh, it's the octagon, bro. Hey, another cool thing about the octagon. You see, we have uh, we have the you see the lights. See yeah. how bright it is in there? Yeah. It's kind of competition lighting. And one thing I'll do when guys are really getting ready for their fights yeah. is turn everything else out in dark. Oh. And so you're just there in that blackness, like with the crowd yeah, yeah. atmosphere. And you can walk out and you play your song when you're in there and you get a ref to come in and like, woo. Really put it in. Yeah, yeah. In, in a fight, it really does get dark and you can't see anything? Uh, you can see a bit, but remember, there's lights kind of shining on you. Yeah. There's not lights shining on the people. Yeah. So you're, you know, which is good. I don't need to see them. They'll just distract me because sure. I have the ADHD. <laughs> this is, that's the that's boss. boss man. So that's Dana. What's up? It's good to see you, sir. <laughs> Drinking early today. Yeah. Early and often. That's what I would say. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to say here too, I don't know if any of your viewers are thieves, but, um, that's $20,000 of uninsured art right there. So Wait, just that? Ju those two together. Oh. So over $20,000 of uninsured art. Who, so. who uh, drew it or painted um, it? Oh, gosh. This is, I, th I always forget this guy's name. He's like my favorite. Is it Van Gogh? Uh, yeah, it's Van Gogh. <laughs> yeah, it is. I just casually got a yeah. Van Gogh on my wall. Yeah, that's, that's how I roll. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I believe, yeah, I just, well, I just call it Vince, you know. Yeah, oh, sure. We're like, you no, know. personally, that makes sense. Yeah, well, those are the books. This is a good book, though. This is a good book. Let's read that one. The Nevada Criminal and Traffic Law? Why are you reading this? Um, I guess you don't read. Well, I don't read it, but I've, I've, just... uh, I've read the important sections oh, okay. of this. What I were the important sections? Uh, well, uh... <laughs> 181 68 speeding oh right so i need that's to know speeding uh, why you can be pulled over um you know yeah. lane change excessive blah 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 you know yeah so i get pulled over a lot so <laughs> oh, i like to know you just gotta have i like foot. to know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway that's it man, man that's it. Yeah. this has been cool i really appreciate this once yeah. again um yeah, it's Forrest Griffin. Do you have any last words? I'm dying now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the electric trains. My last words, the last thing I'll ever do. Huh? What are you most looking forward to um, in the next week? Next, next week. Next week. Like within, from now till next week. The fights. Like, no, no, What's the most I, one you're looking forward to? No, so, but, but seriously, like, this is a very cool place, International Fight Week. 
there's going to be a great vibe and great energy in this building that's going to be humming like you know like i said over 50 ufc athletes coming through now here's something i didn't mention you can bring up to three training partners and a coach so you, it's 50 oh. plus four so that's a that's a lot wow. of throughput yeah. that's a lot of folks you know yeah right because you don't train in a vacuum you have people that corner you and train you sure and whatever yeah it takes so. it, it takes an army thank you it's been yeah. fun I'm looking forward to your MMA debut.